Hey guys, do you have the problem like me, like you've been using a lot of data for many years and you have old drives which haven't died yet, but your server is full or your NAS is full or what do you do with these old drives? Or you have new drives and you don't want to pay f hundreds of euros or dollars or whatever to get an expensive server to house these drives in. You don't need much performance, you just want capacity. Well, I might have a solution for you. This is the Orico 5-bay USB 3 storage system. Now the official name for this storage system is the Orico 9558U3. Okay, well, um, let's forget that name and just call it our 5-bay USB 3 storage array, cabinet, whatever. So if you already have a server or you bought one of these Miele PCG35 APOs, you can build a basically a storage server for about $300. As I mentioned in the beginning, this isn't going to be fast storage. The external cabinet can do about 225 to 250 megabytes a second, but that's more than enough to saturate a gigabit line. And if you're intending to use it as backup storage, like I am, your internet connection is going to be the limit anyway, so we don't need much performance, we just want a lot of capacity. Okay, so let's take a look at the system and uh, see what comes with it. Looking from left to right, we see a USB cable, a USB 3 cable actually, to hook it up to your system. A power brick, I believe it's 12 volts and 6.5 amps, so that's pretty beefy to make sure all your hard disks can spin up at the same time. Then right in front of there, you see a little key which can be used on the latches to lock them closed so the discs can't be removed. And, uh, well, a power cord uh, to connect to the power brick to, to get power. I mean, they don't spin without power, so, yeah. Okay, this is the cabinet. We'll be taking a closer look at that in a minute. And on the right here, I have five times 10 terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf discs. And well, officially the USB 3 cabinet only supports up to 8 terabyte disks. That's a bit of a loose specification because it basically just adheres to the normal standards. And I've tested these 10 terabyte drives fully and they work without issue. Taking a closer look at the cabinet, we see five drive bays. Each drive bay has its own LED, which is normally blue and blinks in a sort of purplish color because it's basically blue with another color mixed in and we can open all trays individually. Now this system does not make use of any hard disk trays, so you can basically just slide in the disks without having to mount any bracket or screws or something like that. Just make sure you put the right side in first. It's the one with the connector. Okay, press it shut and that's it. The disk is in there. Taking a look at the back of the unit, we see an on-off switch, a, uh, well, not really proprietary, it's not a, a usual standard plug for the DC 12 volt, and then we see a USB 3 type B socket to connect the USB cable. Also prominently visible is the, I'm not sure what size it is, it seems bigger than 80 millimeters, but it's smaller than 120 millimeters. But it's a fan and uh, from the documentation it says it's temperature controlled and i'm not sure about that it makes a little bit of noise but not that that much i mean if you have a very silent pc you're going to hear it but otherwise uh, it, it's not intrusive and it's okay okay let's uh, take the other discs and uh, fill the unit up It takes a little bit of force to get some of the latches closed, but it's in there snugly and you don't want any loose connections. 
Here is me locking the drive base so that the drives can't be removed from their trays anymore. And it can prevent theft or something like that, but in reality, if somebody wants to steal your drives, they can just steal the whole unit. But it does prevent accidental removal, so that's good. Let's hook up power and USB. So after that's all hooked up, I uh, got my uh, tiny little mini PC and I put it on top of there. And it's all connected up and I'm currently running Ubuntu 16.04.3. Uh, since this will be used in my DIY cloud backup solution. This little mini PC has an Intel Apollo Lake processor with uh, 4 gigs of built-in memory and a 32 gigs of eMMC storage. Perfect size to run a Linux server edition on it. And well, we'll be using the USB storage as storage to house my backups. Let me turn the unit on. As you can see, the lights are flashing and all the disks are detected. Okay, let's see some configuration values in Linux. As you can see, all the disks are presented as uh, disk 0, disk 1, disk 2, disk 3, disk 4, and they each have their own partitions, etc. Now I'll be using this system with ZFS, and I've been doing extensive testing. This is me moving the array from my testing system to this one. But on my test system, I basically filled up a RAID Z2 of 5 times 10 terabytes in the chassis. I filled it up with random data, and then I did a complete scrub of all the data. It took, I think, 8 days in total. Uh, filling up 30 terabytes and then reading it back again takes a while. And it came back with zero um, read or write errors and no checksum errors. So that works well. So as I mentioned, it works well on the Linux on Intel systems. I tried it on a Haswell system and this Apollo Lake system. And for me, using the Miele PCG35 APO in combination with this storage chassis, as I mentioned, makes for a very powerful combination and hardware wise, without the hard disks of course, it's only about $300. I'll have some affiliate links in the description and if you click those, you'll be helping me out. So if you want to get one of these boxes, thank you very much. Um, I did test the box on a Ryzen Windows 10 system and I encountered some issues there, which actually led to data corruption. So if you have an Intel system for now, or at least you're running Linux, I'm not sure which one of the two was the factor. I can definitely recommend the storage array. As I said, I've read uh, written and read at least 50 terabytes both reads and writes so I can definitely say you're not going to get any errors but I did have them on the Windows side so I don't know about that might have been the AMD USB controller might have been Windows but yeah. so that's kind of it for this video if you have any questions or comments as always uh, let me know down below if you're interested in my DIY cloud backup project to basically replace CrashPlan by doing it yourself, check again, check the links in the description to my blog, intermit.tech. And um, yeah, hope you like this video and maybe subscribe for future videos. See you then. Bye bye.